For this project, I implemented a simple AI that had three states. It can wander, chase, and attack. In a wander state, he will walk in a random direction within his range. If he sees the player, he will go into a chase mode that will register the player last seen location and walk toward it. Then, in a close range, he will walk in a random direction in a cone around him to give an idle animation before he attack. Then, he will attack the player, dealing a random amount of damage in a range of numbers. For this AI, I use an AI controller, behavior tree, blackboard, and enumerator. The enumerator hold variables that give the state of the AI. In this case, the AI has three in state in the enumerator. So he can hold, which is when he gets close to the player, he will stand still moving in a random direction before he attack. After that, he will attack the player. That's the state where he does a, a amount of damage. And then after he attack, he will go into the recovery mode where he recover before he does his next attack. Now I'm going to showcase the behavior tree. If the player is not in range, he's going to be in a roaming state. He's going to roam in a random direction, which the AI take one point in a range, and then the AI will move toward that point. And then if he sees the players, he's going to chase mode. And the chase mode is he's going to check for the player last seen location and walk toward it. And then if he gets close enough, he will move toward it again and then try to attack it. With a simple parallel node, we're going to make that the attack and the move to happen at the same time. It will give an illusion that the enemy is launching an attack at the player. After that, we're going to reset the AI state so it can go back to the chase mode or the holding state before doing the whole attacking animation again. Mm -hmm. Now, why did I use a simple AI? It's because it's the lack of time and the resources. There's not many good resources to make a very complex and decent AI in that short amount of time. Ergo, I had to create a functional AI that everyone in my team can understand and can work around it at the same time. In Greed of Men, our three main core mechanics are explore, combat, and survive. The first one being explore, the player is going to be allowed to uh, explore and you know just travel their way around the map since they're fairly large. You're, if you want to grab all the chests, you are going to be forced to do some of the puzzles. In my case, in my level, I have some keys that you're going to have to find in order to get some of the chests behind locked doors. The second core mechanic is going to be combat. Uh, in order for you to explore certain spots, combat is going to be needed. You will have to take out your sword and shield to get rid of some of the enemy AI that's going to be in your way. Survival, the third core mechanic, is uh, our game was meant to be pretty hard, so you only start off with three potions, and it's going to be a pretty rough to find some other potions and if you are running out of health you are going to have to play the game super carefully and we also don't have any checkpoints in the game so if the player does find themselves in a really hard situation where they don't have any potions and they're almost out of health they're going to have to play in a very uh, slow and defensive manner so the first part of the ui that we'll be looking over is the main menu so if you look in the graph there are four separate buttons with their own functions the start button the quit button, the controls button, and the credits button. When the start button is clicked, it starts the game. When the quit button is quit, it quits the game. However, when the controls button is clicked, it opens up the control widget. And the control widget has all of the different controls used in the game to teach the player on how the game is played. When the credits button is clicked, it opens up a new widget, which directs the player towards our credits screen which has a brief description of all of the game developers, as well as a link to their social media. Next, we'll be going over torch icons. 
So the torch icons are there simply for aesthetic purposes. So when the torch icons are hovered, they appear. And when they are unhovered, they disappear. And lastly, for the main menu, we have the game over screen. So once the player dies inside of the game, this will appear on their screens, giving them two options, one to return to the main menu and one to quit the game. This is done by adding an on-click function for the quit button to quit the game and an on-click function for the menu button to open the menu level. Now we'll talk about the player's UI that is present during gameplay. So the UI is consisted of a health bar, a stamina bar, a gold icon as well as the gold count, a potion icon as well as the potion count. This is all relevant during gameplay. During play, if the player takes damage, the health bar will go down. This can be seen by lowering the percent just to show off how it will be during play. The same can be said for the stamina. However, rather than taking damage, it's when the player either dodges or sprints. The golden potions icons are there to represent the gold that is going to be earned while playing and the potions that the player has remaining. These icons are only present once the player holds the tab key. This is to ensure that the player is more immersed. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it gave you a better understanding of the UI in Greed of Men. Alright, I enjoy working this project with my friends. It gave me a lot of opportunity to learn how to lead a team, how to give tasks, how to manage the project, and also improve my communication skills. It also helped me expand my blueprint knowledge because I have to implement new features, but also help others people to expand their knowledge. If they're creating a features that I already know and they need help, I'm always there to help them figure out how to make this feature work with this current project, but also make their blueprint more optimized and not have any repetition or create any mess in the blueprint and make everything organized. Sharing knowledge and creating feature from scratch was an excellent challenge for me because the number of resources on the internet sometimes is too complex, sometimes for me to understand or for my peers to understand as well. When I learn something, I learn how to create from that, from scratch, and use my own knowledge to create something similar to make sure that I understand and that it's easy to modify for me and also for my peers. And I think creating this big project just give us a lot of opportunity to learn more from than what we learned in school, to expand our knowledge, and also create a very fantastic result in Teamworks and the final project. Uh, for the future of this project, one thing I would like to see, uh, there are a few, but the one main thing I would like to see and what I probably will keep on working on is the combat. Uh, I did want to have actual combos so that the combat would be a lot more entertaining and fun and maybe some dodges and work on a lock-on system because a lock-on system was super important uh, in a game like this and we really wanted to do it, but I guess because of the lack of time, we, uh, we didn't end up working on it. So definitely lock-on system, a better combat system, having more refined dodge and roll mechanics and just be able to have more levels too. I think more levels right now because the scale of them are so large. I think if we had a lot more levels, the game would be a lot more fun and actually be uh, pretty lengthy with more puzzles and things like that. But yeah, and the appreciation for the project, as I mentioned in our presentation, I enjoyed a lot of the teamwork. Uh, having be able to focus on one specific task instead of doing everything on your own, uh, it really helps as a designer and improved me a lot on Unreal and learning new features, learning how to work more uh, efficiently as well. Yeah. What I truly appreciated about this project is the opportunity to practice new skills, learn new techniques, and generally branch out in my specialization. And the future of our project is hopefully we would be able to expand our project by be able, being able to create newer levels, more mechanics, perhaps even a leveling system. 
with funding, our project could develop further. We would be able to create our own assets rather than using assets from the Epic Game Store. And we would be able to properly merchandise our game. 